thrust balls commonly have associations with folds. We can bring this out more if we add some interpretation. Here's some layering and there's the fault going through. In this presentation, we're going to look at alternative models for the relationships between folding and faulting. And we'll try and unify some of these ideas by considering the patterns of deformation associated with fault localization. So let's start with fault bend folding. This goes back to ideas from the Appalachians by Rich in the 1930s, interpreting a fold as a rootless anticline. And here is his restored section for this. And he shows that the folding is a response of the hanging wall to this thrust slice moving up a staircase defined by flats along weak shale horizons connected by steeper segments called ramps that climb through other units. And here's the representation in a schematic diagram here. We're generating a fold as a consequence of moving up a shaped fault, a fault with bends in it. So this is called a fault bend fold. But there are alternative models as well. And here they are represented in a diagram originally drawn by Jameson in the 1980s. Let's think about how these develop. So a fault bend fold works because a thrust propagates effectively instantly through a layered sequence and then it moves. So we have a particular behavior in terms of localization for the fault. It localizes and then slips. As a consequence, it creates a ramp anticline, an anticline in the hanging wall, a fault bend fold. Here's an example of one of these structures in nature from New Zealand. Add the interpretation and we can see that we've created a fold in the hanging wall as the rocks have come down against the fault plane. A critical feature of fault bend folding is that the geometry of the fold in the hanging wall mimics that in the foot wall and consequently the cutoff angle of bedding in the foot wall more or less matches that in the hanging wall. These angles are the same. And because thrusts cut up stratigraphy at dips of about 30 degrees or less, it means that that hanging wall angle has to be about 30 degrees or less coming down bedding against the fault plane. So let's take that understanding and see how well it stands up when we compare with other examples around the world. So here are two other fold structures associated with faults, one from the Jura, one from the Wine Thrust Belt in northwest Scotland. Let's add some geological interpretation of the layering. And in both examples, the beds in the hanging wall come down against the fault plane, making a high angle. In fact, in the lower example, the beds are slightly overturned. So these clearly are not explained simply by the fault bend fold model. Let's see how some other models work then. So an alternative is to suggest that these folds represent part of the growth history of the fault. Let's imagine the fault grows gradually through our multi-layered sequence. So at a given instant, there's a tip on that fault. If we move on the fault plane before the tip has had a chance to migrate very far into our profile, then there's a displacement gradient on the fault to the tip, and as a consequence, the deformation has changed up through the multi-layer. The lower part, shown by the light green, shows the fault offset, but the dark green was deformed by folding, so that we have a compatible structure. It's just that the starlet deformation changes down through the layering. And then to get to the geometry we see in the photograph, the thrust can simply keep growing, and displacing, breaking through the tip. So you end up with a fold that is charting the propagation of the thrust. It's a fault propagation fold. So in these particular examples, the thrust is showing a displacement gradient as it's climbing a ramp. But what happens if the thrust shows a displacement gradient on the flat? You'll still see folding associated with the tip line. Here's an interpreted example from the Zagros and a cross-section drawn by Sabina Biji and others. And this shows the idea that there's an underlying master thrust beneath these rock sequences and the folds are detaching downwards on this master detachment or floor thrust. And the feature of detachment folds is they will grow and amplify as displacement increases on the basal detachment. So here we have three styles of folding associated with thrusting. The fault bend fold, the fault propagation fold, and the detachment fold. 
although strictly a detachment fold, is a full propagation fold. It's just that the fault is propagating on a flat rather than a ramp. So let's see how this works. The fault bend fold, as we've seen, has instantaneous fault propagation through the stratigraphy. In the two other examples, the fault propagates slower relative to the displacement, and so propagation is gradual as the thrust acquires displacement. In the middle example, the instantaneous tip is forming on the thrust ramp. In the lower example, the tip is on the flat. So let's push these in and make our folds. So these different models show different localization behaviors. In the top version, the thrust has grown quickly and propagated effectively through all layers through the stratigraphy. In the middle version, the thrust has propagated quickly along the lower flat and then has stalled as it's climbed up through the stratigraphy so that the localization in the top layer is different to that in the lower one. In the lower diagram, the thrust hasn't propagated through the layers above the basal detachment at all. Rather, that basal detachment is grinding to a halt as it moves, tries to propagate leftwards, and the fold is generated in the layers above. So different localization behaviors are generating different structures. So this is a brief introduction to some alternative models and ways of looking at them for developing fold thrust structures.